Hey guys, welcome to a new series of how to set up your RPG pack for Invector with uh, the Invector controller. So the uh, reason for making a new series is because uh, a few people have been reaching out to me here and there asking me uh, how to do this, how to do that, uh, the old tutorial videos are outdated and things like that. Which is fair of course because uh, the last time I made these tutorials uh, that are currently on YouTube were when, uh, when the system was in beta. So a lot of these things may have undergone changes so it would always be better to you know make a new video series since most of the people aren't exactly into reading documentation. So what I will be discussing in this video is uh, the basics of setting up the RPG pack. Uh, adding the necessary scripts to your player, uh, how you set up a quest provider and a list of quests, uh, and of course setting up one or two quests at, as the starting quest when you enter a scene, uh, things like that. And later of course with other videos we will go on to how we set up the vendor system, how we set up the XP system, uh, things like that. So without further ado let's uh, get into the RPG pack and before I actually start those things, I would like to just show you the uh, show you some of the assets that I'm using in this demo scene. So this is the demo level from the Sinti uh, Polygon Nature Pack, and it's 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 quite it's quite a great pack. It has a lot of objects, a lot of particle effects, and such. So I hope you go and check them out. And I'm also using some of the free assets on the asset store, uh, the rhinos particularly from uh, Maxim Bergrimaud. So he's a really good 3D artist and he has a lot of uh, creatures and humanoid models on his uh, page so you might want to check him out. And we also use the new uh, AI from uh, Invector, the Invector AI template to drive some of these rhinos around. Uh, you might need to check them out and uh, maybe uh, purchase the Invector AI too because it's it's quite it's quite uh, impressive. Alright, so the first things we need to do when we are setting up the RPG pack is of course to get it imported. So we do this by going to the asset store and searching for the RPG pack. So let's do that now. By the way, at the time of uh, creating these videos, the latest version of the RPG pack is version 12201 that was released on the 20th of August and the latest version of Invector that I'm using is Invector 1.2.2 for the shooter and 2.3.2 for the melee combat version and 2.3.2 for the basic locomotion version. Alright, so let's import the RPG pack. So I'll be importing everything with the settings. Port. Also, what I would like to mention is that I'm using Unity 2018.1 here uh, because a lot of you seem to have issues with this editor, so I thought it would be good to uh, set this up with Unity 2018 to show you guys how it works. Alright, so once you have these things in the scene, uh, we need to go and check the errors in the console. So let me go to the console and you will see that we have a bunch of errors here. So these errors are due to the fact that some of the item attributes that come for the RPG pack are not generated yet. So to generate this you need to go to the RPG pack folder, uh, expand the resources folder and click on one of these item enum lists, either one of them, and click on the refresh item enums button. So when you do that, uh, this error should disappear. Alright, so they dis disappeared. Okay, so next we would need to set up a couple of scripts on our player and so I have already created a simple uh, player object that is based on the MIDI controller. Alright. So the first things I would do before I set up anything in the RPG pack is to go and uh, add the objects we need to the player's HUD. So to do this, I would first 
open up the prefabs folder in the RPG pack and copy the UI prefab onto the scene. And that will have uh, any of the objects that we need to add to our UI to make uh, the quest system work. So I'm not going to be talking about experience right now. So I will be adding the item collection display and the quest HUD into uh, my UI object that was already generated. So I'm going to nest it here and I will delete this prefab. All right. So once I have done that, I need to go to my third person controller uh, object and I will add a couple of scripts here. So the first script I'm going to add is the standard item manager object because uh, the quest system is dependent on item manager to uh, provide rewards and things like that. So the item manager is usually set up with a couple of prefabs. Uh, we have our own prefabs for the RPG pack. So I will be copying one of those uh, RPG packs, uh, RPG pack prefabs into the inventory prefab. We have one for the shooter and one for the melee. So I will be copying the melee one. All right. So once we're done with that, we will add the other script that we need to set up in this guy. So that will be the request manager. So you need to drag and drop this item manager to the item manager slot in uh, uh, the quest manager and also drag and drop the prefab that we used earlier into the quest manager's inventory prefab. And lastly, we need to create a new quest list data um, and use it in the quest manager uh, script. So for the moment, I will lock this inspector and I will just go to the location where I need to create a new quest list and I will click on uh, Invector Quests, Create New Quest List Data. The file will be created at your root folder, so you move it to the folder where you want it to be. And I will rename this to, uh, let's say, Demo Quest List. And I will assign this quest list to the quest list data. So now we are ready on the player side uh, to start working with the RPG pack. All right, so I'm going to unlock this inspector now and let's start adding our first quests into the scene by clicking on the quest list that we just created and clicking on the edit quest list. So I will be creating a basic quest where uh, when you enter the scene, you will be trying to find a missing villager. So he will be hiding somewhere here. So the villager will give you a quest uh, that will ask you to go and kill one of these rhinos. And upon killing the rhino, you will get a couple of health potions or stamina potions as a reward. All right. So first of all, let's go and create these quests in the quest list. So I'll do that by clicking on the uh, edit quests in list button and clicking the create new quest from the quest list editor. So let's put this somewhere here. All right. So let's give this quest a name. I'm going to call this quest uh, the missing villager and I will give an objective find the missing villager and I will give some sort of description a villager has on missing to explore the forest at dark All right, so I'm just going to give some sort of icon. Uh, I always like to in the magic access for the demo. All right, so we are done with setting up the quest. Uh, so this quest is going to be a discover quest. And once we're done, I'm going to click on the create. And we also need another quest, and this will be an assassinate quest, and that is to kill the rhino. So I have a glowing rhino in the scene where the glowing rhino is the one that attacks while the normal rhino is the one that uh, runs away when you hit him. All right, so let's uh, set up a quest objective. Kill the glowing rhino.
sorry about the whole dramatic or rather lame storylines, but I always like to create proper quests. All right, so we've set everything up and let's hit create. So the next thing we would need is the missing villager. All right, so, okay, before we create the missing villager, uh, we need to set up which quest we will come into um, as soon as we will enter the scene. So basically a quest that is not provided by uh, a quest provider per se. So we will expand the glowing rhino as a, the assassinate quest we created, sorry, the missing villager quest that we created, and we will be se selecting this checkbox against the set as active quest initially. All right, so that will set uh, this quest as the one that you will immediately uh, start when you enter this scene. All right. So once you're done with that, um, let's go and create our villager. So you need to create an NPC in the scene. You do that by going to the inventor menu, quests, create NPC. So let's uh, create a humanoid model here. So let's just drag, uh, let's just drag the prefab of a VBot. I don't have many models with me. I'm sorry. Uh, so let's choose a VBot. Yeah, let's screw. Let's create one of these guys. So I will be just assigning an animator controller to him. You can use the action text prefab that comes with the RPG pack. And I will set up the demo quest list for this uh, NPC so that he can give us quests from this quest list. Make sure you always use the same quest list uh, throughout the game. All right, so now we have created a quest provider. So I will put him under AI. Mm. Yeah. So I need to move him to the forest now. All right. So let's move him somewhere here. We need to put him in hiding because he's hiding from the rhinos. All right, so he's there now. And next, we need to be able to uh, set up the quest uh, for this uh, quest provider. So you can see that you have you will have a nested object with the same name inside the quest provider's uh, game object. So in case you want to change this name, make sure you change the nested object's name as well. It, it should be the same. Um, all right, so let's expand the quest provider and let's assign uh, a quest to this quest provider, so it has to be the discover quest. So I will add the missing villager quest here. And the next thing I want to be able to do is to set the, uh, oops, I think I selected the wrong quest there. We need the quest provider to give us an assassinate quest. All right, so the next thing we need to do is to set up our quest target. So let's uh, select our Rhino and let's add a V quest target script to this uh, Rhino. Uh, the first thing you need to do is to be able to select a quest from the inspector list, you need to uh, click on the demo quest list and click the show quests in hierarchy button. So what that does is it'll allow you to expand and select these quest objects individually uh, from a third party inspector. All right, so let's go back to our Rhino and select the glowing Rhino quest. And in the, so I'm using the, the AI template. So I want this quest to be complete when this creature is dead. So I will add, I will add an, I will add an uh, event execution to the on dead event, and I will drag and drop this quest target object, and trigger its on target action method when this creature is dead, which will uh, trigger the quest completion. All right. Now that you are done with it, 
I'm going to go back to my quest list and click the hide quests in hierarchy button. All right. So, uh, lastly, we need to create an we need to create a bounding box uh, for our disco request to be able to identify that we have entered the area where the missing villager is. So to do this, um, I will create a new game object. Uh, call it the missing villager hideout, and I will move it somewhere close to our missing villager. So let's bring this object to All right, so we are somewhere close, I believe. So we are going to add a box collider to this object. It's going to be a, a trigger one, and I will set the layer of these two triggers as well. So let's uh, set up the uh, area of this uh, collider to be slightly larger so as soon as you enter this bounding box uh, it will trigger the discard requests uh, completion it doesn't necessarily have to be a box collider all right so we need to add a v discover request target so to be able to select the discovery targets quest here, you need to show quests in hierarchy again. Select the missing village quest. So you're good here. All right. Now we are ready to test uh, this uh, quest and everything else that we have set up. All right. So let's hit the play button. All right. So you can see that we have got the missing village quest. So we need to go and find the missing villager. So he's hiding somewhere here. Right, so the missing villager quest completed now. So when we go to the missing villager and interact with him, I will get this quest window where the, the going rhino uh, needs to be killed. All right, so we accepted the glowing rhino quest. And let's find the glowing rhino. So this is the docile rhino, so this is not a wild one, so it'll just run away when we attack him. So the glowing rhino is the one that's possessed by a demon. So let's try to attack him and see what happens. So he gets furious and he tries to attack you. So you need to kill him before he kills you. Alright, so we managed to injure him. That's why he's fleeing. All right, so I killed him, and that concludes the glowing rhino uh, quest. Oh, I could not set up the reward items, so let's uh, show that also. So what you need to do to set up any reward items is to simply uh, go to that quest, and when you scroll down in custom settings, you will see the reward item list. So you need to select the same item list that you selected for the uh, item manager and you can add whatever item you want as a reward. All right, so all you have to do is save that and hit play again. So let's quickly see uh, the same quest uh, done again. Find the villager, accept the glowing rhino quest kill the glowing rhino right he's running away so let's kill him whoops all right 
So now if we go to our items, you will see that we have got these items as a reward. Alright guys, thanks for watching this. So in the next uh, video, we will discuss how we set up the vendor system. And in a subsequent video, we will just show you how we can um, add uh, the experience manager. And let's see how we can uh, get some experience when we try to kill the glowing rhino. Alright then. Uh, see you in the next video. Have fun.